Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be here with you. And I know some of you who are either here live or watching the replay originally had signed up for the three-day soul immersion. If you are one of those people, welcome back. If you already attended day three and you're like, you know what, I want to watch it again, welcome back again. And I know also that there were a lot of people who signed up once I opened this particular class to just anyone, whether you attend the day one or day two. So the focus for today is how to take soul-led action. And if you already took day one and day two, awesome, because you have that foundation. And if you didn't, no worries, just jump right into this. And please know that when I send the replay, I will also send the replay of day one and day two to everyone. So if you want to watch that, you can, All right? So my name is Lisa Espinosa, and I am a spiritual career coach. And what I help my clients do is to connect with their soul. And what I mean by soul, I mean that part of you that is your true essence, that is connected to the divine, that knows, that has infinite capacity and knows the details of your gifts, of what you're here to share with others, and also knows the details of your life. I think there's a misunderstanding. Sometimes we think that our soul is just like, meditating in heaven and so happy and joyful and has no idea what's happening to us, right? It's just kind of like there, like, but actually your soul is very involved in your life. However, you know this, you've heard this over and over. We have free will. So your soul is not pushy. Your soul is not demanding. Your soul is there. And if you want your soul to lead you, then you're the one that has to give your soul permission, so to speak. You're the one that has to say, yes, soul, please help me, guide me. And actually for me, what I help my clients do is to, to learn how to make their soul the leader, the teacher, the guide, so that they can share their gifts, what I call their soul's medicine, their unique gifts with impact, with joy, while simultaneously creating nurturing, cultivating a life that they love. And so these free master classes that I've been doing almost every month are these particular teachings that focus on one specific thing to help you on that path, on that journey. So today is all about taking soul-led action, like, and, and not just soul-led action every now and then, but consistently like that's the difference. If I think about my life, I know my spiritual evolution, my life evolution has all been about the times when I would tune into my soul when it was either some really intense situation I was going through or a loved one was going through. Or if I was in this really pleasurable experience, like a vacation or a retreat. And it was learning that, yes, it's amazing to connect with our soul those times. But truly, this life is about learning how to connect with our soul every day throughout the day, no matter what is happening around us. But to do that without hustle and without overwhelm. So really the title of this could have been really long, like how to take soul led action without hustle or overwhelm, no matter what is happening. But that would have been like super long. So I didn't call it that, but that's what this is about. And so today, the one of the main things I want to teach you is that this is simple. This is actually simple. So please take that in, that this is actually something that is simple it's something that all of us are able to do. It's something that is our divine inheritance, our birthright. And the only reason it feels hard or challenging or complicated is because of all of these thought errors that we have. It's because nobody teaches us this, right? Like we don't, unless you're a very, you were very lucky and you had parents who like taught you this when you were growing up. Most of us didn't have that. We, in fact, were taught the complete opposite. And so that's the only reason it seems challenging. But 
I think one of my gifts as a coach, as a spiritual teacher, is to really simplify things, not water them down, but simplify it, normalize it so that you understand like, oh, wait, this is actually simple. I actually can do this. And throughout our time together, I will lead some inner journeys so you can dialogue with your soul and get some direct guidance from your soul. And I want to keep reminding you over and over and over how this is something that is simple. But having said that, that it's simple, as I said already, it's not necessarily easy because there's so much resistance externally and internally to that. It's also requires a lot of courage, a lot of practice, a lot of commitment, because when it's so interesting, when we need our soul the most, we're making a decision, we're um, going through something challenging, perhaps, or we're being guided to put ourselves out there, right? To teach a class, to share your gifts in some specific way. Maybe you're making jewelry. It's so interesting. Lately, I've been having a lot of clients who are being drawn to that, which is awesome, right? Like they're, so maybe, or you have artwork or, or whatever feels vulnerable that it's like, oh, I want to share this, but uh, it feels scary, or I'm going to go, I'm looking for a job and uh, I feel scary to be interviewed or to feel like I have to prove myself or whatever it is. Those times are the times where it's the most important to connect with our soul. But those are the times when your ego mind will say, either you don't have time, your soul's up there in heaven having a great time, but barely doesn't know what's going on here, right? Or, or you're just not smart enough, wise enough to really understand your soul's guidance or whatever thing. And so this is why taking soul-led action, you'll learn, is really an everyday thing because that's how you build the muscle. That's how you build the practice, okay? And so I also want to share, I'm also a mother of five, all five young adults now. And, you know, that is absolutely part of my training to do this, right? Because there's, for all of you who are mothers or just caretakers, caregivers, you know, when when there's someone that you love so dearly and you care about so dearly, which is also a super essential time to connect with your soul, it can be actually hard to do that. Because you sometimes when you care about someone so much, it's almost like <gasps> you're just more paralyzed, you feel more pressure, you don't want to mess up, you have to get it right. And so helping my children, not only when they were little, but young, you know, teenagers, young adults, you know, navigating their journey in the workforce, in relationships, all of that has absolutely been a training in me trusting that they have a soul that is guiding them, right? They have their own soul that is guiding them. I am their mother, of course, my role is different now that they're older, but I'm of course still their mother and, and tuning into my soul to like help my soul, help me discern when do I step in? When am I just kind of like loving them and watching them stumble? Cause that's part of their journey. I can't take their lessons away from them. Right. It's like all of that has been absolutely part of my training as well. And I was also a middle school teacher. For those of you who are not in the United States, that's like teenagers, 13, 14 year olds. I used to teach them science and reading for almost 10 years. I used to train teachers. And so all of that is part of what I bring to my expertise that I bring. And also my work as a Reiki master, right? Like really bringing in energy healing. So all of that and, and other experiences that I'll share throughout our time together today are part of what helps me to help you on this path. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to just jump in and we'll do a meditation invocation at a moment here, but we're going to go ahead and start the PowerPoint. So let's go ahead and do that. And... Bridget and I were chatting a little bit before everybody else joined. And it was like, you know, just saying how 
although I literally just had a panic, like I did press record, right? I'm just going to have to check again because I'm just, I know I did. Did this, You see it, Bridget? Like the, but I was like suddenly, yeah, okay. I was like, wait, that it's all happening in divine timing. And I totally, divine order, believe that. Because I went back, you know, when it happened, obviously I was disappointed, but I was also like, okay, there's a reason. Like I've literally never done this. Like I, I'm always saying, okay, remind me to record. And and I didn't think about it once at all. So I was able to go back and really look at this again and refine some teachings and even like add some things, like take away some things that were unnecessary, reorganize, and then like some new things that were downloaded. So I'm very excited. So how to take soul led action. Let's jump in. This is my legal notice. You can read it on your own. The short version is I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychologist or psychiatrist. None of my classes or even my coaching sessions replace that, right? There's a little bio there you can read and you can, my website is there. If you want to read more about what I do, please do that there. And I always say this, um, you know, I don't know who said it first, but that a master masters the basics, right? And so I call these master classes because they are foundational teachings. They're like the alphabet. You know how when a child is learning how to read, they have to know the alphabet first? Well, this is like before you can know all the fancy things in spirituality that people get so drawn to, like how can I read someone's aura or how can I you know, connect to their past lives or how do I, whatever, all the things the most precious gift of all is connecting with your soul. That's where it all begins. That's where everything begins. From that place, then you are in a place of true integrity, authenticity, and love to then share like all these other amazing gifts with the world, right? So, and what today's structure, we're going to have teachings, you know, feel free to take notes, take screenshots, there's going to be Q&A throughout, so any questions you have throughout, please do that. There's a special invitation at the end. You're going to leave knowing how to take soul-led action, and I'm extending the replay availability till the 13th, so that's next Sunday, okay, because of the tech stuff. All right. Okay, so first thing, I'm calling them soul chats because I really want you to get like really start to see connecting with your soul as like a very normal, natural thing that you do. Just like if you were going to pick up a phone, if you have a best friend that you just feel so close to, or maybe you have a lot of best friends that you just know, you just feel so comfortable with, you, you just, yeah, there's no pretense. You just feel so safe with them. If you don't have that, just imagine that. And so imagine that that's how your soul is. Your soul loves you. The one thing that your soul has that your best friend might not have is that your soul has no other responsibility than to like connect with you. That's your the only job your soul has is to like connect with you and help you. And so I want you to think of these as soul chats where you're just going to tune in and and have received guidance from your soul and it's a very normal thing it's not anything that hold on i need to press something here it's not anything that you have to need special equipment for or that you need to have any sort of special training for so i invite you before we do this i'm going to stop the share right here to Let's go ahead and just take some nice cleansing breaths together. And let yourself connect with your heart. Let yourself connect with the earth. I love how the church bells are ringing as I say this. And visualize those roots of light going down your legs and out the bottoms of your feet deep into the earth. And as that happens, your soul is helping to almost like clear your antenna, right? Help you release anything that could distract you, anything that doesn't serve you. 
And then as that happens, then breathing in this beautiful energy of alignment, of flow, of support, of strength, let it move up your legs, up your whole body, all the way to the crown of your head. I invite you to bring the palms of your hands over your heart center and let's everyone, everyone here live, everyone watching the replay, welcome your soul's unconditional love. Welcome your soul into this space. Welcome your soul's wisdom. And I call on a circle of empowerment, of grace, of miracles to surround everyone here live and everyone watching the replay. And I welcome all those guardian angels, archangel guides, especially Archangel Michael. I've just been feeling him so strongly this week. And all of the Ascended Master Guides, including Mother Mary, including Kuan Yin, Grandmother Anna, Mary Magdalene, including Ascended Master Jesus, Maha Avatar Babaji, and so many others, and feel their love and their light surrounding us, creating this circle so that nothing that is out of integrity, out of resonance can enter. It is a protected space. And in that circle now, take a moment to ask your soul, beautiful soul, what am I here to let go of? Particularly around taking consistent soul-led action without overwhelm, without hustle, no matter what. When it comes to that, what are you here to let go of? And when it comes to that, what are you here to receive? Remember, your soul wants to communicate with you. So just ask your soul, beautiful soul, I'm here taking this class on how to take soul-led action, action that you are guiding me to take. What am I here to receive connected to that? And then finally, ask beautiful soul, what am I here to bring? What are you radiating to the group? What gift do you have connected to taking soul-led action? And I don't mean that you necessarily have to share something verbally, but maybe you're someone who has taken a lot of soul-led action already. And so you're bringing your perseverance. Or maybe you're someone who recently took quite a leap of faith and you're bringing that, you're bringing your faith, you're bringing your courage. Or maybe you're someone who took action and you didn't get the results you wanted to get and you felt so disappointed, but you've been practicing compassion and so you're here bringing compassion. So just notice, what are you bringing? And so with that, we bring the palms of our hands together and we bow to each other and our own heart and we declare this space is open, full of love and grace. And so if you wanna share anything that came up as far as what are you here to let go of? What obstacle are you here to let go of when it comes to taking consistent action? Maybe it's not an obstacle. Maybe it's a fear. Or what are you here to receive when it comes to taking action? And what are you here to share? And so have that in your heart or write it in your journal or write it in the chat. It's very powerful to kind of read what everybody's bringing. I know as I've been coaching my clients, I mean, not just these past few weeks, these past few months, these past few years, like there's so much with taking soul-led action. I feel like a lot of times what is being released is confusion. Right, this like feeling like I'm confused. I don't know if I'm supposed to do this or I'm supposed to do that. 
if I'm supposed to speed up or if I'm supposed to slow down, if I'm slowing down because my soul is saying that or because I'm scared, right? There's a lot around confusion. And so the first exploration we're going to do is connected to this is just when you think about taking soul, taking consistent soul-led action, what comes up for you? Just tune in and just write that down on your journal. When you when you hear that, taking consistent soul-led action, what comes up for you? What feelings? What questions, what thoughts? And just write that down. And if you want to share it in the chat, go ahead and do that. And I'll just read some of the ones that I know have come up before. You know, often there's a lot of like, well, I can't do it. I can't keep up with it. Or it'll be too hard. Right? There's a lot of that. But it could also be very exciting. You know, maybe you're at a moment right now in your journey where you're like, yes, that's what I want. I want to take consistent soul led action. I'm ready. I want to take that to the next level. So you're just taking a kind of the temperature inside right now of how that's feeling for you. Bridget is saying, oh, one of the guidance you received is letting go of fear. Yeah, so when you think about taking soul-led action, which is very normal, right? It's like so normal for us to have fear around that. Right, I know someone shared last time about, oh gosh, what if my soul says something for me to do something I don't want to do? or I'm too scared to do, or I'm not ready to do. It, yeah. Oh, Bridget is saying, I want to start a service business. Yes, absolutely. So there's an action step that you're seeing, whether it's to do that now or later, and then there's fear connected to that. And the key then, Bridget, and for everybody listening, you know, you can fill in your example it doesn't mean Bridget has to go and start this service business like today or tomorrow. I mean, it might if she's in that place. But what it means is it's kind of being with that message like, oh, starting a service business. And then there's the fear. And I think often what happens, what we do is Okay, I have this desire, but I'm scared, so forget it. And what your soul is guiding, taking soul-led action doesn't mean, well, do it no matter what. Even if you're scared, just go ahead and, like, that's not the message. It's like, then we we turn to our soul and say, okay, this is a desire I have in my heart, but I'm scared, or I'm terrified, or I don't know how to start. And then let your soul lead you step by little step. All right, so let's continue. Thank you, Bridget, for sharing that. And so we did this. Okay, so to remind you, taking consistent solid action is supposed to be simple. Simple, simple, simple. So whenever you feel confused or like this is too hard or I don't know what to do, remember, wait, this is supposed to be simple. And it also has a built-in safety mechanism. What is the built-in safety mechanism? When you're committed to taking soul action, your soul will correct any missteps that you take. 
This means your soul will always re redirect you back to your highest path, right? So if you're taking action and there's a misstep, you, you take a, a route that your soul didn't want you to take or whatever. And, and that's like, first of all, that is such a human thing. Taking consistent soul-led action does not mean you never make mistakes. You never take missteps. That's part of life. But the, the safety mechanism here is once you're committed to your soul, your soul will automatically start to correct those missteps and not only correct them, but actually create a blessing that comes out of it, right? Like we'll create some um, added benefit from it. But we block that if we judge it. That's the interesting thing, right? So if, so let's just take this one Monday when I forgot to press record, right? And so that was a misstep. Or we could, we could also say my soul did that on purpose, whichever way. But when I found out I was, it's not like I... I remember I realized that and I was just like happy and joyful and jumping up and down, right? Like, yay, my soul will correct any misstep. It wasn't like that. I was disappointed. I was frustrated. I did scramble to look up like, okay, when can I retake, redo this class? But then I also knew like, wait, something good is going to come out of this. And so many good things have come out of it. I mean, so many right? Just looking at the content again, really thinking about this topic, really getting clear, really knowing that I don't think I'll forget again to press record, right? There were so many things. And so, but if I had just stayed in judgment, like what's wrong with me? That was so stupid. Oh my gosh, now I have to waste time or whatever ego judgment, my ego, you know, judgment my ego would have had. Then it blocks the blessing, right? It blocks the healing that can happen. So what does soul-led action look like? Okay, so your soul leads you step-by-step step and only offers the step you're ready for. Once you take that step, the next one will be revealed. This is so important. Please notice if there's any step right now, maybe it, you're asking for a step and you're like, oh, I just want to know what's next. And you're just not getting it. You're like, I just don't receive it. Sometimes the reason you're not receiving the next step is because your soul already gave you one and you're ignoring it or disregarding it or putting it off. So let's tune in together. Just bring your hands to your heart. Take a cleansing breath. And ask your soul. And for some of you, the answer will be no, and that's fine. But for some of you, the answer will be yes. So just notice, remember your soul doesn't judge you, your soul loves you and ask beautiful soul, is there a step that you have been given me? Maybe for a few days, a few weeks, maybe even longer. And I just haven't done it. And you're waiting me, you're waiting for me to take that step before giving me the next step. So just close your eyes and just visualize you're on this path and you're standing on the path and there's now it was going straight, this beautiful golden path, but now there's this path and that path. There's about five different paths in front of you. And you're asking yourself, okay, beautiful, which one is it? Tell me. And your soul loves you so much. And it's not like your soul's trying to torture you, but your soul's like, Look over there. There's a step you have to take before I can give you this answer. And so just ask, just check, is there a step I've been putting off? I heard one for me already as soon as I started to talk about this. It's an email I have to send. That will literally take me probably three minutes or something. <laughs> and so just check, is there a step? 
and just receive it in your heart, write it in your journal and like, okay, I'm going to take that step. And, and, and actually what I'm being guided to do, if you've been putting off, putting it off, just ask yourself why, what is the reason you've been putting off taking that step? Is there a fear? Usually it's a fear, even if the fear is like, I just don't think it'll matter to take that step. Just check. And now notice yourself on that path and notice how now there's one, like there were five different ones in front of you and now there's one that's highlighted. Even if you don't know yet what it is, you're like, uh, okay, as soon as I take this step, it's going to be so clear what the next step is. Again, even if it feels unrelated. So if you have a question, for example, about your career, and you've been asking your soul, and you're like, I'm just not getting any answer. And then right now you checked in and your soul's like, well, there's this little step I've been wanting you to take. And let's say the little step has nothing to do with your career. So you've been ignoring it, but your soul knows because your soul has such a high perspective right? Like a higher view of everything, that that's actually a very crucial step. Okay. So write that down. And the next thing is, if your soul does give you a step that feels too big or like a stretch, it's because you're being prepared to take it when you're ready. Right. And so, for example, with Bridget, I mean, I don't know, but if I'm just using that example, because she shared starting her own service, you know, healing service business, however she said it. Maybe at this point in her life, that feels like, oh my gosh, that feels like a huge step. I don't even know where I would start. I don't know. You know, I don't know. I'm just making this up, right? but I'm just using that as an example. But if her, if her soul gave her that step, her soul gave it to her to prepare her like, okay, there's going to be lots of little steps along the way. Don't worry, I'm not saying go do it right now, but it's like there's gonna, she's being prepared. And so same for you. So notice, is there a big step for you, particularly in your career and how you share your gifts that has felt really big? It might be like you always teach classes in person, but now you're being guided to take to teach classes online. I remember when that felt like a huge step for me. I was like, nobody's going to want to come to online classes. It's not the same thing. It's not the same benefit. It's not going to work. Da, 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 all this stuff, right, that I add. And yet my soul was like, no, that's the next step. This is, and thank goodness, right? And, and it took a while though. So it wasn't like I heard that message and the next day I stopped doing in-person classes and then I was just online. It was a process and I had to work through my fears and I had to, you know, my soul brought me teachers that I saw as examples. And I was like, wow, they're teaching amazing classes and they have clients from all over the world. This is amazing. All right. Then I joined a class and I got to meet women from all over the world, including one that's now like one of my best friends. Right. I would have, there's no way I would have ever met her unless we were both drawn to this teacher who was only teaching online and we, our soul put us together that way. Right. Because this friend is like in Dublin. I had like at that point, no thought that I would ever go there. Now I've been to Ireland three times, but right. So, so know that. So, so what I'm hearing your soul say right now to, to all of us is don't be afraid of receiving the big step. It doesn't mean you have to take it now. Like I, I recent, you know, I've worked with my clients so much on this where there's a step, even it might be a relationship step that they know they're not ready for yet, but their soul is saying, this is where you're headed to have healthier, more balanced relationships. It's not going to happen overnight. I'm going to lead you step by little step, but I want you to know where we're headed. Okay. So write that down, write anything that's coming to you as far as what this could be for you. I'm going to check if anyone's shared anything here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Smiley face. Got it. Okay. So let's move forward. Okay. The other thing with soul-led action, your soul leads you to perfect as you go, 
refine as you go. It's, it's not, it's, it's definitely not about make it perfect before you do it. That is just, I don't ever actually think that was the journey, but it's definitely not at all anymore in this, these times. The world needs to see the process, right? The world needs to see your process, to see, you know, part of being a leader, which if you are here watching this live or on the replay, you are a leader, even if you're like, no, I'm not. Yes, you are, right? You are, because I magnetize leaders to me. A leader, leadership means service. And leadership means that you're willing to go first. You're willing to go first and experience the, the challenges, the blessings, the teaching, the expansion. And part of how you teach is sharing that process. And I'm not suggesting you share inappropriately or you share when you're not ready. Obviously, that's not what I'm saying. But it is sharing the process, right? The process is also the teaching. So for example, for, for students of mine, clients of mine that have been with me since I lived in Chicago, since I was, you know, teaching classes at a local yoga studio and teaching meditation classes there and then teaching Reiki training classes there and then starting to coach and like they, they've seen all that evolution, right? And all of that has been a teaching for them as well. I'm not saying they have to copy me or do what I'm doing, but it's a teaching. Same for me when I see my teachers and I see how they continue to evolve and share the process with their students, with their audience. They're not just like, oh, okay, I'm going to go hide for a year until I process everything and I'm, I'm perfect again and then I'm going to show up. No, they're like showing up throughout it all. You know, so this is the way, and this is how divine feminine leadership works. This isn't a masterclass about divine feminine leadership, so I won't go too much into that. But what divine feminine leadership is, is soul leadership. And it's having the courage to refine as you go, perfect as you go. Okay, the next thing is that your soul knows your life and earthly needs and knows the most efficient simple way to get you there. This will often not make sense to your logical mind. Sorry, I'm writing down the end time for myself because I got a little confused about, wait, when did we start? Okay. So actually, let me back up a little bit. With that refine and perfect as you go, ask yourself right now, bring your hand to your heart. And ask your soul, beautiful soul, show me, is there somewhere in my life right now, somewhere, in, especially in your creativity, in your service, but it might not be in that, it might be something else, that perfection, where perfectionism is holding you back. Where there's a part that's like, oh, no, 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 it's got to be perfect. You know, just, just ask, show me, beautiful soul, show me, is there somewhere in my life where perfectionism, where this fear of, of just showing myself authentically is holding me back. And remember that your soul always answers you, but if in this moment you don't hear the answer, that's okay. It's going to be revealed at exactly the right time. And so please feel free to share any of this in the chat. And so we'll move forward now. What I was the next point here was that the reason I add this is what I said before, right? That we have this misconception that our soul is just floating around in heaven with the angels and Mother Mary and the Ascended Masters. And, you know, every now and then kind of peeks down and looks at us and kind of like, oh my gosh, she's a mess. Let's keep going over here, right? Like it's weird when we say it that way, but sometimes we behave that way. Like we just think, well, my soul doesn't get it that I need money or my soul doesn't get it that, you know, I'm working through this physical healing that I need. And actually your soul absolutely gets it all, right? It's part of your curriculum. And your soul wants to help you get through this in the most efficient way. Truly, truly. 
And so that's why it's learning these principles, practicing this is so essential. And why it, and also sometimes it doesn't make sense to the logical mind. Sorry, somebody entered. Okay. And so think about that. So let's ask that question. Is there a step? Beautiful soul, is there a step that you're guiding me to take that's actually a shortcut that actually would get my me to the results sooner, the results I want sooner? But I'm thinking, no, that's a distraction. No, that doesn't make sense. Just have your soul show you where is the shortcut here that I've just been ignoring or not trusting. And it could be something like, take a day off and go walk in nature. <laughs> you know, that's what I mean. It won't make sense to the logical mind. Like you might think I just have to hustle and work harder and work harder and work harder. And your soul might say like, and we're going to get to that in a little bit, but your soul might actually be like, uh, no, you've got to like go back into your why, why are you doing this? What is the reason you want to share your gifts with the world? And you can't, you're disconnected to it because you're so focused on the goal. So you need to go and disconnect for a bit. Go have fun. Go be with the trees. Remember your pure heart, your pure desire to be of service. That's what's going to get you there faster. Now, the opposite could be true as well, right? I experienced that last week, I think, where I had put in a lot of hours of work. And I was like, I need to just take this, like, I just want to rest and I'll go watch something on Netflix and whatever, whatever. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's, but my soul was like, no, you're just going to have to stretch a little bit more. And you need to look at this one certain thing, like eat, get a little downtime, but go back upstairs in your studio. And like, like it was like this kind of, um, monthly overview planning that my soul wanted me to do and that was the time I had to do it and my logical mind was arguing because like no I need to rest and tune out and whatever but my soul was like and I'm so glad I did it was like the time I needed to like really look at like oh wait a minute what is it that my soul's wanting me to teach and so your soul knows that's what I mean your soul knows exactly what you need Oh, okay. Thank you, Patricia. Okay. So let's keep moving. So what are the obstacles to taking soul-led action consistently? One big obstacle is taking unnecessary action or hustling, right? Wasn't that so interesting? Oftentimes when I start working with clients, one of the first things that I will coach my clients to not do is take more training, right? That they might be like, oh, I want to up-level my career. Maybe they're therapists or coaches or other wellness professionals. And they think they need to go learn more. They need to go learn a new modality. They need to go get more training. They need to go. And that's coming from, I mean, it's well-intentioned, but it's not actually their soul's guidance. Their soul is like, you know enough already. You already are so valuable as you are. You already have so much to share with others. The guidance is actually, is, isn't is actually more training. The guidance is actually show up as you are now, right? And so, and, and again, there's nothing wrong with training. There might absolutely be a time where your soul guides you to take training, right? Like I had that back in 2019, where I was like so done with trainings and this training came up and I was like, I absolutely do not want to take it. <laughs> I was like, it's expensive is what my brain was saying. It's expensive. I don't need it. It's going to take so much time. I already have my own business that I need to work on. I don't need to take this training. And yet my soul kept bringing it up and bringing it up and bringing it up and bringing it up. 
And so I had to really like process that. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, thank goodness I took that training, right? I've met so many amazing people because of that. Like so many blessings have come out of that. So, but one of the blocks taking unnecessary action, trying to make the action perfect and letting that keep you stuck, right? Um, again, sorry, like you might be like, okay, I know I'm being called to whatever, start doing some Facebook lives or post on Facebook or, or share a landing page of a website, right? Or, you know, go teach a meditation class at a local yoga studio or whatever. I'm just giving those examples. It might be something else for you. It might be go start going to yoga class or go start, you know, start journaling every morning or start taking walks every morning or, or meditate or whatever. But there's a part that's like, oh, but first I've got to do this. I have to buy a perfect meditation cushion. Then I'll meditate, right? I have to buy the perfect clothes before I go to the yoga studio and talk to the yoga owner and see if I can teach a class there. Right? Or I have to know, ex I have to come up with the perfect words to put on my landing website before I can do anything. Like I have to know like the exact words to say and make sure they're really powerful and clear and magnetic. And there's, again, there's nothing wrong with any of those things, but it's like that being stuck from that perfectionist place, right? We talked about that earlier today already. And you can be very professional and very, you know, polished. I'm not suggesting sloppiness, but also knowing that my soul guides me to perfect as I go, to refine as I go. Especially right now, because the need is so great. People need you. They need your gifts. And so, for example, with the class, right, that I am inviting you to bless that six-week journey, I could have said, I need like three months to really plan this out and like really think about what exactly am I going to do in every class and all the things. And now I planned it and I have a very, you know, I've been doing this for, you know, 15 years, so it doesn't take me as long to plan things. But I also understood that this is going to be refined and perfected in the process of sharing it as well. And I had to trust that. Even from last, from Monday when I talked about it, was it Monday or Friday? I can't remember. To now, you know, because I'm reteaching this, I was like, oh my gosh, when I looked at it again and I was thinking about it, like I was getting so many, so much more guidance that was coming through. It was the perfecting as I go. And it was because of the things I'm going through in my life that are informing me, educating me, opening my heart, you know, making it easier for me to hear the divine guidance. The other obstacle is fear of taking a step and making a mistake. It's very connected to step number two, but it's a little different. I go, what if it's a mistake? And remember the safety mechanism, your soul will correct any misstep that you take. It will. But that is why also your soul guides you to take little steps by little steps. I know for me, leaving my career, my established career as a teacher in Chicago, right, when I was really at the height of my career, I'd been publishing in education, I was mentoring prospective teachers, I was getting invited to like local universities to like teach student teachers, there was so much happening in my career at the time. I wasn't stagnant. I wasn't burnt out. I was tired. And so that was a huge step. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to talk about the five different types of steps our soul guides us to take. That was definitely a leap. But my soul didn't start with that, right? My soul started with all these other little steps, way so many that I took before being ready to take that leap. And then the last thing, I mean, there's probably more obstacles, but this is one that's biggest fear of taking the steps and being disappointed with the results. Like sometimes it's not, it's just a fear of like, I'm going to put myself out there and what if no one shows up? 
Or what if I don't get the results I want? What if I make this jewelry piece and I go to that, you know, little, um, whatever, Christmas market and I put myself out there and here are all the pieces I made and nobody buys them or one person buys them. And then I'm so disappointed, right? Or I say I'm going to teach a class and no one shows up. Or I go talk about this thing that I think I know a lot about and somebody really questions me and doubts me and is like, you don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> and it's like that, which all of those versions of that have happened to me. Not jewelry, I don't make jewelry, but you know, the version of that for me. <laughs> and so that is a big thing that keeps us from taking soul-led actions, that fear of disappointment. And you know, one of the things I taught another masterclass and I can't remember which one it was where I talked about how this journey, there are hard things in it. It is hard to be disappointed and we can do hard things and we, and our body can handle Like when we start to tell ourselves like, yeah, I don't like being disappointed, but I can handle being disappointed. I can love myself through that. I can... I can get support. You know, that's one of the things I help my clients with so much, right? That's why I have a coach. That's why I am a coach. Sometimes we do need help with from, you know, people to help us with this. But it's like not being afraid, not not letting that hold us back. Well, I don't want to be disappointed. So I'm just like not even going to try. That's sometimes the reason we actually don't even look for help, right? That it's like, oh, what if I invest my time or my money, or both to get this help, and then it doesn't help, then I'm going to be so crushed and disappointed. Let me not try. But is that really the kind of person we want to be? Even though it might seem easier in the short run, I guarantee you it always feels better to try. It really does, even if there's a crushing disappointment. And I have had many, many of those but on the other side, there's always been then more courage, more love, more perseverance, more trust, more faith, as opposed to just keeping myself small, 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 right? So let's see if anybody's... Bridget saying, okay, thank you for sharing that. I fear success more than failure. Yeah, so that's a great one to add to here. So one obstacle might be fearing the success. And, you know, and think about what does that mean? What is actually the fear, right? And and this is, I'm so glad you brought this up, Bridget. Like I, I know for a lot, it's so interesting for a lot of my clients, you know, if because a lot of my clients are wellness professionals and there might be this like, first this fear of like, oh, I'm not going to have enough clients. And then there's this fear of like, wait a minute, what if I do really well and I have a ton of clients and then I'm overwhelmed or I can't deliver results or I never have time for myself anymore or, you know, I have no privacy or blah, whatever, you know, it's like there is, there is such a fear and maybe none of those are your fears, Bridget, but it just made me think of that, like things that I've felt or that I've coached my clients through of like, what if it does work, right? What if, what if I am successful? And then my family doesn't love me anymore. You know, what if I am so successful that I, I'm in a different income bracket and suddenly the people that I knew and loved judge me or think that I now am a conceited person or now expect me to rescue them or whatever. There is absolutely, that is a huge one. Thank you, Bridget, for sharing that. And so notice if that's something that is coming up for any of you. I like look at this list and maybe there's others that aren't named and just kind of ident put a little check mark next to like, which one is the one that I kind of feel more, or maybe you're just feeling it more in this, this week or this day. And the reason it's important to, to name this is because then we normalize it. Once we put it out in the open, once we say, and we're like, oh, yeah, I have this part that's just really stuck in perfectionism. 
that's super normal. A lot of people feel this. Now we can start the process of like, now what do we do with that, right? It's like, or I'm afraid of making a mistake or like Bridget said, I'm actually afraid of success. What will that mean? What will that mean to my self-concept? I've been so used to thinking this about myself or whatever the thing is. So let's bring our hands over our heart. I'm going to stop the thing a little bit here. And see yourself standing on that beautiful golden path again. You're standing on the path. And this is your highest path. This is the path where you're sharing your gifts with the most joy, with the most impact, while cultivating just a life that you love. And you see this path before you and you know, as you look at the path before you, that there's a lot of steps. There's a lot of steps to take. And you know that your soul is there for you every step of the way. Your soul's like, I've got you. I'm here. And just notice as you, you know, almost like, your soul extends her hand to you. And I'm just going to use that pronoun her for now. And you hold her hand. And maybe you welcome an ascended master as well, or a guardian angel that's there behind you as well. And so your, your soul is holding your hand. You know, maybe Mother Mary's right there behind you or in front of you. And your soul's just guiding you like so lovingly throughout this path. And in some of the path, you're you're walking actually very, very slowly. You're walking very slowly. You're enjoying the view. You're just walking very slowly, like, oh, like this, this beautiful path that you're on, you're looking at the flowers and the trees and taking in the beautiful sunlight, the breeze. And then there's other parts of the path where you completely stop. And you just stop and you're just like taking some deep breaths. And, and maybe you're looking behind you and you're like, wow, look at how much I've already walked. And, and your soul's guiding you to celebrate, like, oh, celebrate how much you've already walked. Or maybe your soul's guiding you to cry and, and letting yourself grieve if there's something that was really challenging that happened. And your soul's like, it's okay to stop and just be with your feelings. And then notice there's other parts on the path where you are just taking step after step. It's like doo, 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 just like this really nice kind of like fluid pace. And it's like, whoa, I'm moving across this path pretty swiftly. It's just like it's like these beautiful stones, and you're like on one stone and then the next one and then the next one and then the next one. And then suddenly there's a slowing down again, like, oh, and your soul's not slowing you down to punish you. It's like, wait, 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 let's slow down. Look at this beautiful view here. Ooh, look at what you just learned when you took all those steps. Look at all the pearls of wisdom that you're gaining to share with your students, your clients, your loved ones, the world. And then... Let's say after the slowdown, it's again, step, 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 step. And then you get to a point where there's a huge step. 
kind of like, you're like, whoa, I'm on a stone and I see this other gorgeous, amazing, beautiful stone, glittery like a crystal. And it's a leap. But your soul's like, I've got you because look at all the steps you've been taking and all the times you slowed down and all the times you stopped when you were, you know, just to stop to like take it in and integrate. And so then your soul and your angels and Mother Mary and whoever else are like, they take you on that leap and you land on that crystal. And you're like, wow, I just took a leap. And then you keep going on the path. Right? There's little steps, there's bigger steps, there's times you slow down, there's times when there's leaps. And then there's going to be a point where there's a big, big, big leap. There's such a big leap that you're like, I, there's no way I can take this leap. And this is what we call a quantum leap. Right? Where it's like, whoa, I'm going from one way of being to a whole other way. And just know, we're not going to take the leap yet. We're not taking that quantum leap yet. But just kind of know your soul is showing you all this, giving you an overview. This is what soul-led action looks like. It's not this whole other, you know, just in, in fact, let me slow down here and see what you're what the oversoul here wants us to see. It's not a snail's pace all the time. Like just go teeny, teeny, teeny little steps every time. Like, no, it's very dynamic. Even when you slow down, even when you stop. And it's also not hustle, hustle, hustle. Let me skip over 10 steps and get to the other side because at, even when you think you do that, you end up in the same place, right? We've experienced that before. And so be there with your soul, just taking that in like, wow. And just notice, where are you right now? Like where, and and I, I want to say this too, that your soul is saying, sometimes all of these happen in one day. Like you might have in your day moments where you're just stopped. Right? We talked about pause, receive, take action. There might be moments in your day when you're slowly moving. And then you're kind of like more swiftly moving. And then there might be a leap. And then there might be even a quantum leap. And the more, and you're so saying, the more you trust me, the more you practice this, the more that happens every day, as opposed to like a year journey where something that used to be take you a year or more how can be condensed into a day? And it's not coming from lack or limitation or hustle. It's coming because you're trusting your soul. And so as your soul showed you all this, now you're back in the golden path in the beginning. And now you're asking your soul to show you, say, beautiful soul, show me what is my biggest obstacle? What is the thing? that hinders my path? Is it my fear of making mistakes? Is it my fear that it's not perfect? Is it fear of success? Is it fear of disappointment? Or, or anything else, right? Those are just some. Ask your soul and, and remember your soul loves you so unconditionally and is so patient. It's just so happy that you're asking. So write that down, whatever your soul is showing you, like this is, is it maybe self-judgment? Maybe your soul is showing you that you judge yourself when it's the slow part of the path and you're like, oh. Why am I going slow? But your soul's like, this is exactly how it's supposed to be right now. You've done nothing wrong. Just write it down. What is your soul saying? And then ask your soul, beautiful soul, show me a step that you're guiding me to take.
show me a step, whether it's little or big or medium or whatever it is, just show me a step. And write that down. And then finally, just ask your soul, say, beautiful soul, fill me with your light. Like your soul is going to shower you with her light to expand your capacity to take soul-led action. It's like you're getting like these vitamins from your soul. Blessing, your soul's blessing your path. Receive a blessing from your angels, from Mother Mary, or any other divine being that was there. And take some deep cleansing breaths as you come back. And so we're going to continue just to anchor it in with the teachings. We did that. <clears throat> so whatever the obstacles, they're created by your ego mind, not your soul. Because remember, taking soul at action is simple. Okay, so there's four types of soul at actions. Wait, five types. I wrote four, but it's five. <clears throat> And your soul just kind of showed them to you in that meditation we just did. One is stop, right? Like on the path when your soul was like, just stop, take in the view. Notice how far you've come. Maybe stop and celebrate. Or maybe stop and grieve. Maybe you just got through so much, so much, so much, so much, so much, so much. And now your soul's like, take a pause. Let yourself grieve. Like that happened to me so much when we moved to Mexico. I mean, it was such a really thinking back, such a quick decision, such a like a whirlwind of like sell our house, sell our my car, sell all the books. So this, it was like frenzy, 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 like and that's just how it needed to be. And even though I felt like I was processing at the during it, it obviously I couldn't that much because there was so much action to do. And so those first few months in Mexico, there was so much grieving of like just all levels of it that I had just hadn't been able to do. And then there's, you slow down. Then there's, you take a little step and then another step. And it doesn't have to be in this order, right? We noticed that in the meditation. Then there's, you take a leap and leap is relative. For you, a leap might be making a phone call. That might be a leap and that is okay. And then we get into you ride the quantum leap. And I, I'm going to do a masterclass all about quantum leaps because they're very misunderstood. We think that it means like, oh, I was just here and suddenly this miracle happened and now I'm a millionaire or whatever, right? Or now my, but it's always a culmination of all these other steps. But the magical thing about a quantum leap is like what I say there, it's deep transformation. And what I want to say, this is one of the new teachings that came through when I was preparing to reteach this, that often quantum leaps are so subtle that you might miss it. Like, But it's important not to miss it because as soon as you acknowledge it, then you see the quantum leap manifest in your life. So for example... A quantum leap could be that you put yourself out there. I don't know. You do something. Let's just stick with the jewelry example. And let's say nobody buys anything. And in the past, that would have just crushed you. And you would have been so disappointed and resentful and maybe in lack and just feeling like all the things. But this time, you just are so loving to yourself. And you're like, that's okay. So I'm just going to try again. And I'm just going to adjust. And you just feel like, and you're, you're, you notice, you're like, wow, like that would have just taken me down before. But like, 
I'm not just pretending to be okay with it. Like I'm actually okay with it. Like I, I love myself. Like I know this has nothing to do with how worthy I am, what my jewelry, if my jewelry is beautiful or not. It was just like a series of factors that I, I can adjust. That's a quantum leap because that's like literally represents that you have done so much healing and up-leveling of your thoughts. And although that might seem like, well, that's not a big deal. Like, okay, I wasn't disappointed. Then that's going to lead to all this change in your external. Like I've seen that in my life. I've seen that in my client lives, clients' lives. And it's one of the things that I help my clients do the most when we're coaching or in the breakthrough consult to see like you're actually on the verge of a quantum leap. And so many times we just like dismiss them. It's like, it's almost there. It's almost there. And we're just kind of like, nah. but it's like, it's so important. So again, I'm not going to go too into the mechanics because, or the mechanics, the metaphysics of it, because I think that requires a whole other kind of offer, but I just want you to know, and you might recognize when you hear that, you might be like, oh my gosh, yeah, I can think back on all these things that are just so different in my life now. It was quantum leaps. I mean, gosh, I can think of myself as a young woman and like, ugh, all the men I attracted into my life, right? Like I'm talking like years ago. And it just felt like literally every man I encountered had the same qualities. And I was like, and it was, you know, it just felt like that. And then through my inner work, through my work with therapists, through my work with coaching, through my spiritual journey, through all the little steps and big steps and everything, 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 everything to get to the quantum leap moment where some guy like that showed up in my life again. And I just was not interested at all. I was just like, it wasn't even an issue. It wasn't even like, it was more like, wow, I probably in the past would have somehow engaged with that person. And now I don't, it's not even, and then to magnetize a whole different type of relationship. Like that was a quantum leap. Right? It was like, and so you can think back like, oh my gosh, all the quantum leaps you've done. And the quantum leap that you're in the middle of doing now, that your soul's like, I am helping you. Like one of my quantum leaps is like this next level of service, like this like next level of like, you know, past uh, like limitations in my fears of what my capacity is or getting feeling overwhelmed by it or you know it's like I can feel it and I can feel the discomfort and I can feel the stretch and I can feel that happening for me right so like notice where you're feeling that and and be courageous like ask your soul like Oh, Jill, I love them. She's saying, my soul said, go outside and there's a grasshopper leaps and bounds. Yes, I saw a grasshopper yesterday too. And, you know, I love October, my birthday month, preparation for Days of the Dead, which is one of my favorite holy days of the year. And also grasshoppers are really prevalent in October. And I just saw one yesterday too. It was like, I was walking and went, Burr! and I know it's always like, quantum leap, quantum leap, I know. <laughs> so great. Thank you, Jill, for bringing in the grasshopper medicine. And so, yeah. And maybe when we pull cards at the end, it'll be like, what are the quantum leaps that are here for you? I'm very excited about that. And even, you know, with quantum leaps, like, you know, just be, I'm really feeling the grasshopper here. Just like, even the quantum leaps of like, like your quantum leaps and letting yourself receive Right, like letting yourself receive. I was just having that conversation with, the, well, actually with several clients and they are in the middle of an initiation where their instruction from their soul is you have to receive more. And you would think that would be the easiest instruction ever to follow, but it's not because there's so much that comes up. It's like receiving beyond your comfort. Right, like that, that's the quantum leap therein. So what are your necessary skills? You need to resist the urge to overanalyze or hustle. Like you just need to notice, I have an urge to perfect this. I have an urge to analyze. I have an urge to overact, you know, take a bunch of action, overaction. And sit with that urge. Ask your soul to help you with that urge. Get help. If you're like, 
those urges are so strong in me. I mean, the for me, the urge to hustle, it was just like a pattern in me that I developed out of necessity, right? I was a single mom. I had five children. I was in college. I mean, there was, I had to hustle. But then when I got to a point in my life where that wasn't helping anymore, it was a well-practiced pattern in me. And I needed help with that. Like I needed to receive help to heal that. Expand your capacity to receive, right? I just talked about that. And learned the soul-led action principles. Like literally write them on an index card. You have to remind yourself of that. It's about perfecting as I go. As I go. My soul leads me step by little step. Sometimes my soul is telling me to, a step that seems unrelated, but it's the right step to take. Like those things will bring you back in the moment. I can't tell you how many times I'm feeling stuck or I'm feeling confused. And I go back to like, wait a minute. My soul's never confused. I didn't share that today, but you can know that as a bonus soul principle. My soul's always clear. My soul's never confused. If I'm feeling confused is because it's my ego kind of like getting in the way. I can tune into my soul's clarity. That can be the beginning of getting clarity. Okay. So thank you so much all of you for coming back. I mean, I think some of you were in the original one of this class that I did. So thank you for being here. And I want to share the invitation. And, you know, this is something that I was able to kind of work on a little more. And I love this Mother Mary picture, this image. Actually, it's called Tonantzin. Tonantzin is the Aztec word for like divine mother, great mother. A lot of people believe the nun scene was actually the origins of Our Lady of Guadalupe. But I'm, you know, for me, Mother Mary, Guadalupe, the nun scene, Juan Yen, they're all representations of the Divine Mother. And this, as I've been, you know, you, uh, many of you know, I've been working on my book, Priestess Rise Up, for several years now. And this was one of the images that she came, came to me. Like, I mean, I didn't draw this, but I found online and I was like, oh, this kind of abundance of flowers and roses. And it just felt perfect to share it as an introduction to this six-week journey that I am embarking on with whomever wants to join me. And so it's called blessed. And I really wanted to share what does embodying the state of being blessed mean? And when I asked that, because that's what this journey is about, like Mother Mary was like, okay, this, this is about embodying that. Because when we embody that, that's when we can serve, create through overflow. So what is it? Knowing One, knowing your soul loves you unconditionally. And that's that requires practice. You don't just know it and like, okay, I know it now, move on. No, like literally you have to remind yourself that of that. You have to practice living that truth. Then receiving from your soul constantly, which I love this picture with the sunflower just receiving, right? I use that image in one of the days of like the sun just like, ah, oh, beaming, you receive. And then because you're doing those things, as a result, you overflow with blessings without depletion. So I love that waterfall, those waterfalls. That's what embodying this means, right? That's what the embodiment of that mantra that Mother Mary gave me, I am blessed and I am a blessing, right? It's like, I am blessed and I am a blessing. I know my soul loves me unconditionally and I remind myself of that over and over and over when I forget. And I'm constantly practicing receiving from my soul because I know when I do that, then I overflow with giving, with blessings, without rescuing and depletion. And I say here, reclaiming our blessed state require, takes courage and is one of the most powerful healing acts we can do for humanity. So this isn't about, let's go on this six-week journey because I'm blessed and everybody else is not. Like, no, it's like, let's embody this to be way showers, right? In your work, in your career, in your life. And this is whether you have a career or you're like, retired and you know you're still of service wherever you are in your journey and it's like serving in your career and living your life embodying the mantra i am blessed and i am a blessing that's what's going to transform the world it truly is 
because it's not just a pretty thing to say, right? It's a, it's an activation. It's a, it's, it activates a divine technology within us as blessers. And so I'm like, this is a movement. Do you want to join me? Yes. Whoever is called to do this, I'm like, because I do feel that. I, I feel that about everything. I feel that about sharing your soul's medicine. That is a movement. That is what we're here for. And so what does it include? Five 90-minute circles via Zoom on Mondays at 2 and one graduation bless ceremony, which I will talk about. Each circle is going to include simple, powerful teachings. So this isn't like you're going to be there 90 minutes taking notes and just like all this content. Like No, it's like there will be, it will be anchored in teachings, but it's really experiential because that's how you awaken this. This is about embodying it, being in your body with it. The replays will absolutely be provided. So whether you can attend live or on the replay, don't let that stop you. And please don't, I'm not just saying that as some sort of marketing ploy. Like literally, I, I've shared this before, but I'm working with three amazing teachers right now. And just um, logistically, I can't attend all of the classes live. And I had to really make a decision with some of this. Like if I had that thought, well, only if I can attend live, that's the only way it's worth it. If not, it's not worth it. I'm not going to get the result. But I was like, no, I really want to work with this teacher. And I really want to, I really believe now is the time. And it, and so the reason I can say, I mean, I want, obviously I would love for you to be there live, but the reason I can say you will receive the blessings, whether you're there live or not, is because I am experiencing that. I'm not just saying that. It's like, I live that. Okay. So mother Mary will be the overlighting mentor for the six week journey. Okay. And please know this is beyond any sort of religion, religious box they put her in. This is Mother Mary as the ascended master that she is. And each week, other powerful ascended masters and archangels will join the class to help bring deep healing, integration, and activations. So Mother Mary and friends, <laughs> you think about it. But remember, your soul is the most important and powerful master you will be connecting with throughout this journey. That's the thing about Mother Mary and Kuan Yin and the Buddha, and Jesus, and all of these masters, they're not here so you can worship them. They're here to remind you, hey, you are a master. Connect with your soul within you. And so just a quick overview of the weeks. Week one, what does it mean to be blessed? Like, What does that actually mean? I know I talked about it a little bit here, but we're going to go more deep into that. What does it mean? What does it mean even energetically in your chakras? And Mother Mary and Grandmother Anna are going to be our hosts for that day. And there's going to be others, but they're really like, yeah, we're going to talk about that. Grandmother Anna is Mother Mary's mom, by the way. <laughs> like, that's what I, you know, that's, but it's like, she was a, a really powerful priestess as well. Week two, where is the wound of deprivation blocking your blessings? We're going to welcome Ascended Master Kuan Yin to help heal those wounds. Wounds, beliefs of feeling deprived and in lack. Week three, what blessings are meant to overflow through you to the world? I am so excited about this class. I mean, I'm excited about all of them, but I just, the that thought, like, remember, you have specific blessings that are already pouring out of you, but this is like taking it to the next level. Like, what are the unique blessings? What are the unique prayers you're here to answer for people? And Ascended Masters Mary Magdalene and Jesus will be our guides for that class, right? Like, what is the unique blessing you have to offer the world? Blessings, and for some of you, it's not even going to be like, shop, I didn't know. But it might be like, oh my gosh, like I've been sharing this tip of the iceberg. There's so much more that can flow through me. And remember, this isn't about depletion or hustle. It's like allowing that. And Mary Magdalene and G, I mean, they're both just, this is going to really bring that divine feminine, divine masculine partnership together. 
Week four, what aspects of your blessed heart are being activated? This is going to be all heart chakra, really opening the portal of your heart. I mean, we, 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 it's like the tip of the iceberg when we talk about our heart and the power it has. And Mother Mary, of course, is involved with all of this, but she really is the master of the sacred heart that we're going to tune into. And then how do you live? How do you align with that state of being blessed every day throughout the day? And this is like connecting with the future you that is overflowing with blessings. Hathor and Green Tara. I mean, when they came through and said, we've got you on week five, I was like, oh my gosh. And if you're like, who's Hathor and who's Green Tara? Don't worry. We will talk about that. But this is like truly knowing that time is not linear and we you can connect with that version of you who already is embodying this blessed state. That's what this is about. Ooh, I'm getting like chills as I'm saying this in the good way. <laughs> Okay, so week six, then we're going to have a blessed graduation ceremony where each person will receive an individualized channeled blessing. I know some of you have attended these. I have never done this class before, but I've done other trainings where there's been a graduation at the end. So this is an, so we all gather in a group, whether you're there live or on the replay. And I've had people who've had to do that on the replay. But even if it's on the replay, I, your soul is there. I call your name. And then I'm in a my oracular priestess self medicine. And it is such a great honor for me to channel the messages that are specific for you in that graduation ceremony. It might take a little while <laughs> during, you know, to get all of us, but it's all recorded. All your divine allies will be in attendance. And so there is a few bonuses you can partake in if you want. You don't have to. But bonus one is as soon as you join, I will invite you to be part of a private WhatsApp group. And the reason this is, this is not, I know there's different, and if you're like, what's WhatsApp? That's just a free app you can download on your phone where you can start a group. And there's a lot of different kinds. So I want to be very clear about what this is and what this is not. This is not a chat where we all get to chat with each other. It just didn't feel like the right resonance for this leading up to the first day. What this is, is an opportunity for me, as soon as you enroll, to start sharing some blessings with you in preparation for day one. What do I mean by blessings? I might share some you know, like a link to an awesome song that I'm like, oh my gosh, this song is such a heart opener because I love music. Like I just, music is one of my languages, my love languages. I might pull an Oracle card and share it on the thread to inspire you that day, right? I might share, maybe I might even share like a little video of myself kind of sharing something that I feel is really relevant. So it'll just be me like, kind of sharing these little blessings as we head to day one. The reason even I didn't do it as a everybody share, everybody respond, even though that can be really beautiful and powerful, it can also be very overwhelming. And I don't want you to wake up and be like, I have a hundred WhatsApp messages. I've been in groups like that. Even if it's the loveliest people ever, I'm just like, I'm so overwhelmed. I can't even read any of it. There's so many things. I can't follow the thread. So this is going to be a very inspiring, beautiful, curated like offering so that you're just like, if you want to enjoy it and you're like, oh, I want to check that song out. You can, if you're like, oh, that's such a lovely Oracle card that really speaks to me. Awesome. That helps us stay connected, but it's not at all meant to be overwhelming. And you, you won't even be able to comment on it. I do think you can put a little heart. I think maybe that's part of it. Okay. But you don't have to do any of it. If you're like, I just rather not be part of it. That's absolutely fine. And bonus two, I shared if you, if there's someone in your life that you're like, oh my gosh, she would love this and they sign up, you will receive a $15 credit for either a coaching group that I'm going to start at the beginning of 2025, or if I, if that gets put up, put uh, kind of postponed for whatever reason, you'll get a $15 credit for one of the Mother Mary classes that I'll be doing. Okay. And remember, for those of you who've been with me for a while, Mother Mary said this to me years ago. It's in my book, Priestess Rise Up. She was like, the priestesses have suffered enough. And I was like, oh. it was just like, and 
And this is kind of the answer to that. Like we've suffered, we agree, we were courageous and noble and said, yeah, send me down to earth and I'm going to have some pretty intense initiations. And a lot of them are going to suck, like really. And I'm doing that not as a masochist, but I'm doing that because it's part of my service to humanity. It's part of my service to go through this so I can get to the other side and help people get to the other side. And yet Mother Mary and her high priestess message is like, and it's enough. But we can get stuck in that suffering virus. We can get addicted to suffering. Isn't that crazy? We can get attached to suffering. And so this is like an answer to that. And this is why she wanted me to teach this before the coaching program I was going to start. She's like, this has to be the foundation. So I will send the email with the registration details. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Also remember, you always have the opportunity to schedule a private breakthrough consultation with me. We can talk about the six-week program. You can ask me about that as well. But it's really an opportunity for you to get some help and clarity. Whether you sign up to coach with me or not, it is a transformative hour for you. That I can absolutely guarantee you. Like I've never had, unless somebody didn't show up, but I've never had one where it's kind of like, well, that was boring or what? It was just like, it's it's always healing, you know, to have a space for you. Okay, stop here. Thank you so much, everyone, for being part of this day three, day one. And as I said, I will send the replay. And when I send the replay, I will also send the replays for day one and day two again, in case you want to go back and watch those. And I will send a separate email with the information for Bless, the link, and the registration details so you can be one of the founding sisters that's like, yeah, like I feel like I'm like carrying a banner like Joan of Arc, like you are blessed. You know, I've done that meditation. Like you have a banner. What are you holding in your banner? For a long time, my banner said, you have a unique soul's medicine. The world needs it. And I still have that banner. But I feel like I also have a banner that's like, you are blessed and you are a blessing. You know, you know like just holding that banner. And I'm like, all right, priestesses, come on, we're we're doing this. And so whoever wants to join already, I do think there is something really powerful when we like, we're like, yeah, and I'm registered. I'm like joining it now. The blessings start now as soon as you say yes and register. So let's pull some cards. I know we're about five minutes after, but I want to pull a couple of cards about you taking action. If you have to go, please feel free to do that. It'll be in the recording, but I want to do... Um, I didn't do an animal card last time. So let's do an animal card. And actually I pulled this gorgeous card a few days ago for me, this, look at this white stag protector. If there's any Harry Potter fans in the group, I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, but I am going to put it here. So we have a complete deck and just ask what the spirit animal is guiding you to take soul led action. So think about the golden path. This is the image that's coming so beautiful. You're on the golden path and there's this beautiful spirit animal right there that's helping you through the stopping, through the slowing down, through the, you know, consistent actions, through the leaps, through the quantum leap. So let's ask which one it is. All right, beautiful spirit animal. Which one is it for everyone here live, everyone in the replay? And anyone, if you share, feel free to share this link with anyone. So anyone who's watching this, you're included. I'm saying this. Oh my gosh, two. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. I'm sorry. Owl. First of all, owl. Magic. Choose to know the truth because you can. Oh my gosh. Open your inner vision. You can see through deception. Let the past go and make room for a better life. Rise up. Magic and wisdom are your birthright. How awesome is that? So on your path, you have this stunning white owl. I mean, and I was just talking about Harry Potter. Like, yes. 
And please, if you have any issues with author of Harry Potter, which has been a torment to me, I'm still enjoying the stories, but here you go. Beautiful owl, look at this. And then the next card I pulled was the one I just showed you, the white stag, it came back. White stag, protector. So listen to what this says. You are an old soul. Your best friend is nature. Use your intuition to take you where you want to go. Awaken to the powerful force within you. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry, I'm freaking out. You are meant to create blessings with your magic. All right, whoops. All right. These two, and they're both white. All, none of, like the animals are not all white, but these two are like this beautiful pearlescent white. I know, Jill, I agree. <laughs> I know, I was like, because I saw, I had this card and I was like, oh, I'll put it in just in case it's meant to come out for everyone. And it did, and the owl. I love that we have air, right? We have the air animal, like which represents thoughts and vision. And then we have this stag that's so grounded, but look at its crown, crown chakra. I mean, this is such a balanced pair. I love this. And then I'll just do one more card from the magical spirit because I hadn't picked. Oh, I want to share in case you're wondering that animal cards were from this beautiful Oracle deck, Spirit of the Animals Oracle. And now I'm going to just pull a card from the magic spirit, magical spirit Oracle, this one here. And then we shall be done. All right. Here we go. What message about your steps taking soul-led action consistently without overwhelm or hustle, no matter what? Oh, this is so beautiful. Okay. Sorry, it took me out because I was looking at it and I was like, oh my gosh, I've not seen this one. Breaking into bloom. The key words are time, liberation, understanding. And this is the message that the card says. Sometimes you will break before you bloom. Okay. So this is that beautiful message of the breakdown before the breakthrough. And so don't be scared of the breaking. This doesn't mean you're going to be crushed and flattened, but it's like sometimes our heart needs to kind of break open, right? Like crack open. It's like, there's a, a, oh my gosh. And I'm remembering, I didn't even show you the Mother Mary card I pulled for this class was this Our Lady of the Dark Mysteries. And I'm going to just read to you the little part because it goes with this. Just this little part, it says here. Our Lady of the Dark Mysteries comes to you with guidance to be honest with your suffering and know that you are not alone in it. And through this, she invites you to open to her ecstatic bliss, to the divine presence in the everyday. So it's like, to me, this is like the Mother Mary that's like in that part of the golden path where your soul saying, slow down, pause, acknowledge the feelings you have, whether it's disappointment or sadness or grief or anger or hurt. And she's like, I'm there with you. And then this card here says, sometimes you will break before you bloom. And so I feel like this is, and notice, look at that. It's like, I don't know if you can see, but she's got like a, a vine growing out of her third eye. And then there's a beautiful rose looking at her. So I feel like this is so beautiful. It's like on this path of taking soul-led action, you know, not being afraid because I think sometimes we misunderstand. We think taking soul-led action means I'm just skipping through the path and I'm just so happy and so joyful and it's just unicorns and daisies and it's all beautiful the whole time. And that's not what we signed up for. And it's like in acknowledging that there's the blessings, right? And then you have the owl and the stag and oh, so beautiful. All right, we are done. Thank you everyone so much. I will see you soon. I will send the invitation right now and I'll send the replay when I have it. And I hope to see you in all the things. I sent the newsletter with the October events. There's a special Mother Mary class. 
There's all these amazing podcast episodes. There's Blessed. I hope to see you in that and in all the other things. And in the Breakthrough Consult, if you decide to do a, a private session of that, I would absolutely be my great honor to connect with you and help you. All right. Bye, everyone. See ya. And it is being recorded. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was like double checking. All right. Bye-bye.